Welcome to the uh, introduction to statistical learning using our book club. Um, it's great to have you all uh, to like learn together. Um, this is, I think, a really great book um, in a lot of ways. I, I've I haven't read either, I haven't I've just read you know the first couple chapters for this book club, but um, uh, I didn't read the first edition, and I have not read the elements of statistical learning either um, that they mentioned um as like kind of a, a more technical companion um but uh really excited for it for a lot of reasons we can get into that um in a little bit but uh what i wanted to accomplish today is basically uh introduce ourselves kind of get to know each other um talk a little bit about uh the kind of how the club is organized uh so we'll do that first uh kind of the pace organization book club um get into the uh first chapters just some of those high level concepts um they talk about and um and yeah I, I also made a little like poll that i hope uh we can all just take in a few minutes like really quickly just to kind of get a sense for what you all have kind of experience in or feel good about and what you're interested in learning more about in terms of the chapters and concepts in the book so i think i thought that would be a good way to kind of get get a sense for the group um so first things first um each so the the club meets every week um it's at this time each week uh there'll be cases where you know too many people are going to be out for a holiday or something obviously that's fine uh you know we're um we're, it's not a, a course that we're getting assessed on or anything like that so um you know we're all here to learn um and learn from each other and and also uh, through the creation of like materials and stuff, help other people learn who do future cohorts of this book as well. Um, so each week, um, the basics of how it works is that you go kind of chapter by chapter. So each week, a volunteer will present a chapter from the book. So I'm just doing the first week because I'm helping facilitate and um, and uh, um, yeah, and you know we're just getting started. But uh, I shared this sign up sheet in the um, in the uh, Slack. It's also pinned to the channel. I can show you where that is uh, in a second. Um, but basically, it's it's like a chapter every for every two weeks. Um, and the reason why it's set up like this is because each chapter, if you've looked ahead, has content like statistics, theory, all that stuff. Uh, at the, uh, kind of. Um, you know, in the in the body of the chapter, and then there's exercises at the end. And the exercises are really uh, seem really valuable, uh, and I think we can get a lot out of doing them ourselves and talking through them and talking through kind of you know what we thought, how we how we approached it, or what we thought the answers were, and um, uh, et cetera. So the way it's organized right now is that you have one week for the actual chapter content. And one week for the lab, it's called, uh, which is just exercises at the end. Um, and so that's how it's organized right now. Um, we can change things for our own preferences and you know whatever we'd like to do. Um, if you the way you sign up for presenting is you just put your name next to one of the weeks. So these are like tentative weeks, just based on when we're starting today, which is today. Um, but uh, these could change depending on what our you know. Uh, roadblocks, things, things that come up, etc. I put my name down for next week, uh, just to kind of get a full chapter going. But if anyone is really antsy to present on it, uh, you can replace me. That's totally fine. Um, but I thought I'd just go in there just to get one going um, for kind of like a typical chapter. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's how it, the the other cohorts have done this. We're actually the fourth cohort, um, which is really nice because we're benefiting from everything that the other cohorts have done. One of those things is this um, this R uh, book down uh, generated book. Uh, so it's actually hosted out of this GitHub repo um, for the book. And um, let's see, let's make sure I'm covering everything here. Um, yeah, so we'll, the presentations will consist of like review of the material, a, di a discussion and or a demonstration of the principles of the chapter. Um, more information is actually in the re repo readme about how to present. And there are steps here about how to like actually 
do the um, kind of the changes, if you want to make any changes to uh, the content that's being presented uh, through GitHub, um, that information is here. Um, uh, but yeah, and then the presentations will be recorded. Uh, so the reason why we do that is so that um, other people or like if you miss it or uh, future cohorts, like if they want to learn from what other what the past cohorts have done, uh, they'll they can do that. Um, so there's a R for data science online YouTube channel um, that has those uh, recordings. Um, but if, uh, like, if there's anything that comes up that like you want to not be in a recording or something like that, just let me know or John know, uh, John, the geek on Slack, um, and he'll, we'll take care of that. Um, sometimes people accidentally share something that's like, I don't know, like a company, like, like privacy type issue. Like if they put, have something on their screen that they didn't realize it was there, stuff like that. Um, but really anything, if you have any concerns, just talk to us. Um, all right. The book club is, uh, we're going to be reading the second edition. So this came out, I think in the last eight or nine months. Um, they're uh, both freely available online. Uh, so all the book clubs that we do generally at, in this are for data science Slack are freely available. Um, there's a book website that the authors have that's really nice. And I just wanted to show, so if you go in here and you go into a uh, second edition book, there's a lot of resources too. So first of all, if you, you know, if you haven't already and you're, if you're reading it online, you're probably doing this. So you probably already know this, but this is how you're, you know, you can find the book to read it. And then there's a lot of great resources. So I just wanted to show this quickly. So for every chapter, there's a R like code file. Um, there's also our markdown files. Just pull one of these up. So it, it basically the content of the chapter and exercises and examples in the chapter are all going to be um, up here. It's really cool that the authors are able to do this. And then there's also Jupyter Notebook files. If you wanted to see what it looks like in Python, um, you can feel free to check those out as well. And then there's also slides. So um, I think these can be really helpful for supplementing like a presentation each week. Um, if you wanted to just pull some stuff or just really just go through the slides, I think that's totally fine as well. Um, but I just, I'll show you what those look like. So it's kind of like a presentation format of the, of the chapter. Um, I've just like glanced through them and they seem pretty decent. Um, I'll probably go through this for a little bit today. Um, Okay. Oh. A lot of data, data sets as well uh, up here. Uh, you can also download the figures. So it's a very much like open book in a lot of ways. Um, okay. I mean, can you put the yeah. link to this, the uh, GitHub, please? Or sure. the book down? Sorry. Yep. Um, so this is the GitHub. Um, let me. Back to the chat here. That's the GitHub. Great, thank um, you. And then if you go in the README down here, you see the book down link. Or no, that's a book downs package. Uh, hold on. Uh, producing notes about the book right there. Um, get to it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so the, uh, I think as you were talking about before, some of you all joined. The book is actually often used for a two semester long course. Uh, for the uh, when the author teach it or other people teach it uh, so far. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll try to do one chapter a week, but we can uh, like like kind of the content one week, the lab the second week. Yeah, but if we need to kind of take more time on something, I think especially if like we want as a group to learn more or go deeper on something, that's fine as well. Um, so we can adjust that as needed. Uh, and then we'll try to meet every week, but if there is some holidays or breaks, things like that. That's fine too. Uh, it's probably going to take a. It's going to take a little bit to get through this book, so um, you know it's reasonable that we can't make it every single Sunday. Um, you know, as it's listed in this calendar here, like this goes all the way until October, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, all right, 
So, um, so what I actually wanted to do before we go into the introduction of like the, the actual uh, concepts that they talked about in the book, what I wanted to do is um, let's see the order of this. Let's uh, let's introduce ourselves first and just say a little bit of maybe about who you are, where you're where you're calling in from, and uh, like what you're looking to get out of the book. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it would just be good to kind of introduce ourselves. So I can go first. Uh, my name is Kevin. Uh, I'm living in Boston, Massachusetts in the US, um, just north of the city. Uh, and I, I'm really interested in this book because I like, uh, feel like I found data science through uh, like uh, education research at first. And I've like kind of collected different learnings and concepts along the way, and different techniques and stuff. But uh, I don't, I don't feel like I always have a, a full, like, um, like a, like a good review or a good foundation and like kind of everything that, that, uh, is, are kind of the key concepts in, uh, machine learning and statistics. Um, I just like, I'm always looking for something that can like kind of round me out a little more. Um, so, and, and yeah, um, so that's, that's what I'm kind of really interested in this book. Um, but yeah, uh, whoever wants to go next. I'll go next, I suppose. Uh, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, my interest in this book, I do a lot of data analysis and I do an awful lot of uh, mainly business data these days, but I'm also interested in other things. And uh, I, I, I have a similar situation to you that I have this like scattering of tools and stuff. And I feel like I like to bring them all together. Uh, and most of my work actually has been in Python. So that's another thing that drew mm -hmm. me to this book is I really want to get better with R. I mean, I, I can know how to, you know, kind of stumble around with R Studio somewhat. It's maybe not as bad as that. I'm actually getting a little bit better already from other things I'm doing, but I want to get that unified view as well. I'm hoping to get that out of this book. And also I'm doing at the same time, this other book, Statistical Rethinking, which is a R based oh, as nice. well. And it's a different approach. So it's more of the Bayesian approach. And this is more of a kind of, I would think it's more traditional approach with yeah so I want to get both of those viewpoints and that's what I'm hoping to get out of that oh and the reason why I want to do more R I should mention is because there's an awful lot of material like statistical rethinking and you know I have this cool book on uh, using R to analyze baseball data for example which I want to get okay. into at some point so I, I feel like I really want to get some good um R chops I guess and this I'm hoping to get some way along that with this course nice is that David Robinson that book the the Ours baseball one. No, it's not who oh, Max Mark Marchi, Jim oh, Albert, okay. Benjamin Palmer. Cool. Second edition. So apparently they've had some success with this. <laughs> nice. Oh, great to meet you. And uh I lived yeah, in Tempe, nice Arizona for a couple of years. Uh so now oh, it's not too far. No the area. Yeah. I lived in uh New Hampshire, uh worked in uh, <laughs> MIT Lincoln Laboratory for quite some time. Oh, okay. So I know the Boston area quite well too. <laughs> great. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, go Red Sox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't mind going next. Hi, I'm Lydia Gibson. In about two weeks, I'll be finishing up my first year of my master's of statistics. Yeah, the first year of it, two year program, master's of statistics. Um, yeah, so I actually just um, this semester, I took a course on linear logistic regression. And also like I audited the statistical learning course, but I didn't take it for credit just so it wouldn't like plummet my grade. Um, but yeah, so I'm interested in like learning more about it. And plus I already have the book. So nice, yeah, nice. I really, yeah, I'd be really interested in learning more about it. And also like being able to keep like the stuff in my mind because at the end of my program, I have a comprehensive exam. So <laughs> need to keep this keep like learning and like yeah <laughs> but nice to meet you all and I'm looking forward to this book club yeah great were they using this this text as like the in that course this book uh, so or, this book know? was this is the main book for the statistical learning course uh -huh. but for my regression class it is let me see what this one is um a modern approach to regression with R oh, cool. Yeah, so this was the main one for the regression class. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I'm currently in San Jose, California, but originally from New York. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm from I'm I, actually I'm from New York uh, as well. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> so 
I didn't say anything about the Go Red Sox thing, but uh, I'm a big Yankee <laughs> fan. So. I was never um, into sports, so I can't say anything. Yeah. But is your program also in San Jose, or uh... it's actually in Hayward? Like it's um, oh, okay. Cal State East Bay in Hayward, mm-hmm. California. Yeah, so kind of awesome. in between like San Jose and Oakland. Yeah. Okay. Right. Great. I'm very jealous of like anyone who's able to like do a two-year master's or whatever in, in statistics. I. I, if, if if I get the time to, I'd love to like yeah. do that, but uh, I don't know. It's like for me, sometimes for me, it's like hard to justify to like take the time. But yeah, anyway, I, it sounds like a lot of fun. So, yeah. so next, um, hi everyone. I'm Parnika, and currently I'm based in Atlanta. Um, I am looking forward to the book club just for continuous learning. So I am. Uh, in education research and Kevin was actually my TAs for one of the classes um, uh, for my master's. I just finished my PhD and I have mostly used Jamovi or JASP uh, and Jamovi is based in R. Um, and I have used R on and off and as well as Python but I have never really stuck with it. Like I just know the problem to solve and then I go to R and it's open so I know how to do it. But Given an option, I would not choose R. I would go and just choose Jamovi or SPSS kind of uh, tools. Um, so just looking forward to building some skills and learning more about R and just sticking with it. Uh, yeah, that's Jamovi right there. And it's also really easy to learn R with Jamovi. So it's great. Um, so yeah, I'm just learning, um, sticking here to learn R more or just build a community around it. Great, right, welcome, and great to see you again. Uh, sure, uh, doing the course uh, a few years ago. So, um, sorry if my Wi-Fi is bad. It often gets bad just the, the point where I need to talk. So hopefully it'll it'll be good. But I'm Sandra. Um, I'm currently in Lima, Peru. That's where I'm, I'm waiting to. Um, just, you know, get my green card hopefully very soon. And so I'm here and wanting to go back to uh, Berkeley. So that's where I got my PhD at UC Berkeley in uh, molecular biology. And um, I guess the reason that I'm interested is in is because I got into like transcriptomics, so analysis of gene expression data. And it's very heavily based on R and R packages. And um, in addition to learning to code for some of those types of applications, um, I wanted to sort of review a lot of this statistics. So I took statistics, you know, as an undergrad, like a million years ago, and, you know, there are new methods coming out. And also, you know, nowadays it's much more computational than it used to be. And I want to sort of get, I guess, like a wider understanding, you know, of, of what there is in statistical learning, and then be able to apply that to analysis of gene expression data. Um, so just complement whatever thing I know, the the small amount I feel, and just expand upon that. So, great. Yeah. Yeah. Super interesting. Do you still? Uh, so I'm guessing you work in the area that you uh, studied uh, in your program uh, that you that you got your doctorate in. Um, I do. So um, I was a bench scientist. So I I didn't do a lot of these computational things. But towards the end of the program, I had a data set that you know I generated, and I was like, I want to learn how to analyze this. And so that opened up you know this whole world of possibilities in a sense. Mm-hmm. And so um, because I'm here, you know, waiting to process my green card and because of the pandemic, it's taking a long time. It has really allowed me in a sense to keep up collaborations where I'm doing a lot of analysis on these like gene expression data sets. And it's been very helpful in that way. Yeah. But um, hopefully once I get back, yes, I would like to get back into like more molecular work, um, but also just expand on this computational side. Cool. Um... Yeah, I know. Is it like, is there that, that there's like that uh, set of packages or bioconductor? Is that right? Is that like the yes. same? Yes. Is that the same? Okay. Same area. Uh, mm-hmm. I've like come across it a few times and I've never had a, like a reason to use them, but like everyone seems to refer to that set of. Yeah. Packages. So bioconductor uh, is super helpful. There's, uh, there's actually a bioconductor, I think, um, channel on the R4DS that either just started or is semi-recent. Okay. And that's all about, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Like either genomics people or people into gene expression 
there's there's a lot, especially in R for that type of analysis. Yeah, yeah, really. I, I definitely want to learn more about it. It just seems like there's a really strong community community of like developers and users, and just find it interesting. But yeah, dig into yeah. it at some point and learn about it. Um, I feel though like um and sorry you know you we just table this conversation for later but um especially in biology I don't know you know in for other areas of study like for you guys uh, like Parnica or Lydia who are in different fields or you know Kevin or Ronald but for biology it just seems like there's a bunch of like tools and packages and everyone just sort of mixes and matches and then people will lean towards, you know, like either the most popular package that everyone is using or the better documented package, just because it's easier to get help in the troubleshooting. And so sometimes it seems like very disparate, you know, like when you're going into it, like, what do you choose? Like, which package should you use? And sometimes, you know, I posted on Bioconductor asking like, hey, you know, what's a good analysis package for this and then everyone puts forth their own and I'm like this is not helpful <laughs> it's sort of oh you know the one that I wrote is better and so <laughs> um yeah. I don't know if that is the case for you know other fields as well like I wish there were something more unified like a streamlined pipeline and I think people are trying to do this with things like you know snake make that will control like workflows but again it's very based on you know whatever lab you came from and what they do or what package they use right. so yeah i think in uh in our um at least in statistics and like machine learning areas uh like one of the issues i think a lot of people ran into is that there are a lot of different packages like you're saying for doing the same thing yeah the same technique or different implementations of the same technique and um I think one recent effort that's like really useful in that regard is this tidy models meta package and framework. And I don't know if anyone else has used it, but it's like trying to solve that problem and kind of provide a consistent API set of code that uh, you can kind of sub in different backends or different packages to um, uh, implementations to accomplish something, but it's like a unified set of syntax, which I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah. But awesome. All right, so I think everyone was able to introduce themselves, is everyone? Cool. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting set of uh, different backgrounds, really cool. Um, all right, so I just made this like short survey, um, hoping that I already, I completed it uh, before the, um, should take like a minute. And just before you do it, um, basically, I just made two questions, uh, uh, basically talking about each chapter. So um, this is each one of these I tried to map on to each of the chapters in order. Um, and I just want to get a feel for kind of each of our, um, and it's totally anonymous, um, each of our understandings or confidence in each of these areas and like what, especially what we're interested in. Um, so the first one is about, how confident or knowledgeable we feel in each of these. And then this one is how interested we are in learning more. Um, it may be that everything that we don't know a lot about, we wanna learn more about, but it also could be that everyone wants to learn about deep learning, I don't know. Um, so I feel like just, it might just be helpful to get like a, a cohort wide view of how we all feel about these things. So um, so just, if you can take a minute, um, uh, fill it out and then uh, I can, I'll, yeah, and uh, yeah, well, why don't we do that? And then um, yeah, it should be in the chat. Um, then we can kind of talk about if you want what our, uh, what we're kind of most looking forward to in terms of the concepts. Yeah, I see Sham has joined. Hey. Hi, Kevin. Sorry. How's it going? Sorry. Yeah, we're can. uh good cool uh we're actually doing this just short survey i made um for uh for the concepts in the book um do you see in the chat the google oh. form link okay yeah um i can see it in your screen not in the chat oh uh, okay in the uh, slide here maybe i can put it in there again maybe since you okay, joined yeah, yeah. yeah I, I see it now cool so let's take another minute uh minute and a half, whatever, uh, till we're able to fill it out and then we can kind of talk about 
what we're and then Sham, I'll give you uh, a second to introduce yourself after we've completed it. Yeah. Um, I, I, what did you say, Kevin? Sorry? What did you say? Oh, uh, once we're finished with the survey, uh, then we can uh, um, okay. Okay. Uh, talk about the, um, uh, do your introduction, sorry, because uh, we already introduced ourselves. Uh, all right, uh, so wait, let's see if my math's good. All right, so we need uh, one more response. All right. Um, are you all able to fill it out? So let's see five here. All right. Well, I can talk about um, kind of how I felt about the like just looking. So basically, looking for, forward towards what's in the book. Um, I think it's just good to look ahead, see see what we have uh, coming up for the different concepts and what we feel like we may want to spend more time on, less time on, uh, what we're all like, you know, most interested in. So for me, um, I feel like, you know, it's always good to get a, kind of a re recover uh, some of the stuff that I'm familiar with, but like linear aggression, but um, uh, and I use every day um, in my job, but uh, like I always think it's good to revisit familiar concepts. Um, for for me, like uh, so, one of the things I'm most interested in is uh, this. Um, well, one of the chapters is this nonlinear uh, this nonlinear concept. So I've like I took a really short course in uh, generalized additive models. Uh, that's really, I can share the link later if you want. Um, that's free, it's online. And I thought they were really intriguing and like very interpretable and like just interesting, um, but I don't have a lot of experience in it. And I think they're really kind of valuable class of techniques, um, especially for their interpretability, but also their flexibility. And splines is something I know very little about. Um, so that was like really high on my interest area um i love tree-based stuff uh i use it, those like a lot um and i find them fascinating i want to learn more but i feel relatively confident about that deep learning I, i've done a little bit but it's not really something that i uh have a lot of like solid experience in. i would say and then lastly survival analysis i'm like super curious about and um i know there's a whole class of like problems that they're kind of critical for, and I really want to get some basics down for this. Um, so, so yeah. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. So, let's see. So, a few of us are like relatively familiar with linear regression. It feels like similar to what I was saying. Um, classification. You know, a little bit wider of a um, uh, like. Uh, response um, there. Um, resampling, a little bit more familiar. Um, and then we start to get a little bit later um, and, you know, maybe a little bit less familiar, kind of similar to what I was saying. So, um, you know, nonlinear modeling, tree based methods, deep learning, um, um, and these kind of later concepts, I guess, feeling like we have a little bit less experience in those. Um, terms of interest, let's see here. So, um, so 
uh, yeah, it seems like similar to what I was saying, like pretty interested in kind of refining the, even things that we said we were somewhat confident in kind of uh, getting another pass at those. Um, linear model selection, cool. Um, and then maybe like a wider, like kind of dispersion of like, some people seem like they're really interested in tree-based methods, some in unsupervised learning, but like there's like strong interest in at least one of those later topic areas. Um, cool. Uh, any anything anyone wants to say about like the chapters and that we that are coming up and the concepts in the book and kind of what you're looking specifically to get out of those? Uh, if you wanted to share more. If not, that's okay too. I can go into this part. All right, uh, we can come back into come back to it. Um, but I hope that was like at least helpful just to like think in advance about uh, yeah the concepts that are coming up and you know what you might want to focus on. Yeah, the only um, thing I want to comment on is that there are a couple of these topics I really even not even sure what they are. <laughs> like yeah, tree based yeah, methods. Yeah. I don't know what that even is. So cool. I'm definitely looking forward to finding. Out. I don't know if they're useful for some things for me, but they probably are. So I'm, yeah, I'm into that. That so. makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's like. In, in some things it's like you don't know you don't know you know yeah so uh exactly okay cool yeah um that's good to know yeah i was just gonna echo that where especially towards the end of the book i'm like i have no idea what those things are <laughs> like i have a vague impression of what unsupervised learning is but that was like one of the only ones that like i guess past chapter five or so i wasn't too familiar with much of it past that but yeah, I'd be interested to even learn like the basics of what these things are. So if it came up in conversation, like, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, it's similar for me as well. Like I know like support vector machines and SVMs and classification and um, just because I did some analysis on a neuroimaging data set. But again, it's just like, I know these words. I still need to like brush up and go deeper into it. Yeah. So it was the same for me. So it's great to look at the graph and see like all of us and how it's kind of similar, what our interests are. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting to me too. Um, oh yeah, before I forget, uh, Sham, do you wanna introduce yourself uh, before we get into the chapter uh, content? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Shamsuddin Muhammad. I'm a PhD student at University of Porto, Portugal. I'm from Nigeria. Um, I'm doing my research on um, low resource natural language processing for African languages. And in particular, I'm interested in stuff uh, like uh, um, classification, sentiment analysis, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, I'm happy to join and learn together. Thank you. Great. Yeah, great to have you. Um, do you say you're in Portugal, uh, studying in Portugal? Or? Yeah, sure. Yeah, in oh, Portugal. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. um, Great. Yeah, I have been in a couple of book clubs here. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I, I think this is one of my, I think, seventh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Sham, you, you're doing the uh, command line book. Uh, oh, yeah. Science sure. at the command line yeah. is starting soon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. highlighting highlighting your facilitatorship <laughs> there, too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, great to have you. Uh, thanks uh, for joining. All right, uh, so let's go through the content. So the first chapter, uh, yeah, as a lot of introductions are, they're like you know a decent overview of what you would expect to see coming up in the rest of the book. Um, so they talk about different kinds of statistical learning in this chapter. Um, they talk a little bit about what they expect their audience to be, um, the mathematical notation in the book. Um, the kind of layout of how they structure the chapters and uh, data, uh, how you get the data that, they that they're using. All right, um, so yeah, so they describe statistical learning as the, the foundation for, theoretical foundation for machine learning. Um, it's connecting statistics and functional analysis. And that term is interesting. I actually haven't, uh, don't know, I'd be interested in learning more what they mean by functional in that case, but maybe like applied uh, 
maybe it's a synonym, synonym for applied. Um, but yeah, so in general, when we're talking about statistical learning, uh, we're talking about two general classes of, of, of problems and um, techniques. So one of them is supervised learning, one of them is unsupervised. Um, in supervised learning contexts, you have some sort of an outcome that you're predicting. So you're hey, trying to, hello? Kevin, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but what is the format, by the way, for interrupting and uh, asking questions? <laughs> yeah, uh, you can just do what you did. No, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to or, put a or function... raise your hand. There's yeah. like a hand raise oh, thing, I think. Okay, or, I'll use that next time. Uh, but you know, Funks. you can just you can just interrupt it's a small group so uh okay. so just so you know functional analysis is like kind of a generalization of vector analysis and okay you know so that's all they're talking about there's that's you know linear algebra is a big part of all this stuff right even though they're not uh, focusing a lot on that here but gotcha so it's a, a reference to um yeah you can vectors you can find and you can google it and see what it is but yeah cool i'll look at that yeah thanks um thanks um Okay, and so they use some examples here about predicting wage from uh, some uh, uh, variables like age, education, year, market direction. Um, so that would be like a, a binary outcome, like did it go up or down from previous days performance or will it go up or down, sorry. Um, it's kind of like a forecasting problem. And then there's a lot of scenarios where you have unsupervised uh, data. So you see so your problems where you don't have some sort of, you don't have any sort of an outcome that you're trying to predict or any labels um, to classify around uh, under uh, you're you're trying to find uh, what patterns exist among the variables you have in your data set um, uh, without yeah trying to kind of uh, make uh, accurate predictions about some kind of an outcome um, so a lot of this analysis is like cluster analysis um, but I think also there's a uh, whole classes of problems like anomaly detection that also fall into this. Um, uh, some anomaly detection is, is supervised, but a lot of it's unsupervised. Um, uh, in my, my job, actually, uh, I didn't actually didn't mention this, but I work at a, a, a company that does speech recognition um, for healthcare. And, um, and I'm on a, like a DevOps team that looks at uh, uh, basically we, we manage and respond to like production incidents when there's like the systems down or slow or whatever. Um, and thankfully most of the time there aren't, uh, outages, but so, so, which is great, but it also creates a problem from a statistical point of view, because you don't have a lot of, you know, if you wanted to predict an outage, you don't have a lot of data to, to do that on. So we use a lot of like unsupervised um, anomaly detection kind of techniques, and those are really helpful in that context. Um, but yeah, in general, you're finding kind of relationships between your variables and structure that exists. Um, so yeah, so those two general types of uh, approaches. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. is it safe for me to say statistical learning is a machine learning? Is it okay? Um, I think they're trying to define it as the theoretical framework for machine learning. Um, so the theory, the theory behind uh, a lot of machine learning techniques, I would say, but if anyone has anything, uh, another interpretation of that, I think it's a good question. I actually have a separate question. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, does anyone have any 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 other thoughts for Sham? Uh, and then we can go to yours. Uh, all right, maybe we can come back to that. yeah. Go ahead, uh, uh, Sandra. Oh, sorry. No, oh. in in the the book, it just says statistical learning refers to a vast set of tools for understanding data. So I think what I got from that was that maybe machine learning is a subset of it, of a more general, you know, just understanding trends or patterns in like large data sets. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me too. Um, yeah, I guess not everything all uh, would be classified as machine learning that they've listed in kind of the coming chapters. Although, right. I don't know. I've heard some people argue that linear regression is machine learning, but I think uh, and most people don't take that point of view. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I think like ultimately yeah. it all would be right because it's all sort of computational. But I think machine learning refers to specifically, um, I think it's specific types of either functions, right, that are used for mm. specific processes as opposed to just general trends. Like, for example, like if you're doing clustering or regression, right, you wouldn't consider that machine learning or would you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think there is a lot of clustering and trend analysis that I would, I would consider mm -hmm. machine learning. Um, right, right. Yeah, like, yeah, interesting. Like, like there's a particular, um, the one of the techniques I love in, in the anomaly detection world is this thing called um, isolation forests. So it's basically mm -hmm. like decision trees, but the goal is to isolate data points. Um, but you don't have any like labels, but it's trying to, it's like doing this random partitioning of the data set to try to like figure out uh, on different variables, to try to figure out which which observations are, you know, uh, are easy to isolate basically. Um, mm -hmm. And so in that case, like I would consider that machine learning, but like you don't have any sort of, uh, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, like it's, it's identifying the points that are easy to isolate, but like you don't have an outcome that you're training on or whatever, but. Yeah, 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 okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah, Sham, did, uh, do you have another question? I see your hand is actually up and Lydia. Oh, no, or... no, no, thank you. Okay, Lydia, you have uh, something you'd like to share? Yeah, and I'll chime in on that question as well. I think some of my professors, like what I've heard is like, they're more or less the same thing. They're kind of more or less synonyms or synonymous, whichever way you want to say it. And I guess like when I look at this, maybe it's like the statistics is the theory behind why you do the machine learning and the machine learning itself is just like the actual application of the theory of like mm. the statistics that kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. But my actual question was, so as far as the book club, so I was, I'm part of the first cohort of the GG plot book club. So we had mm. to make the whole book ourselves, like the book down. So how okay. does this one work? Do we actually, are we changing anything or is it kind yeah. of go over what's there? It's a good question. Uh, glad you brought that up. So. So we're the fourth cohort, uh, as you mentioned. So um, it's possible in some cases we won't change anything. So like I'm doing right now, uh, most people do the presentation just from the book down book. Um, and since we've had other cohorts, they've already made a lot of it. So in some cases you may not change much. In this case, I actually added uh, this premise um, uh, sub, uh, I guess you call it like a heading um, section, um, but, maybe in some cases you, you won't. So yeah, uh, it's like, we're benefiting from all of that. And, and ideally we make it better, um, but you, you know, three other cohorts have gone through it. So there's some cases probably where we don't change much, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, all right, uh, so um, thanks for that discussion. It was really good. Um, so yeah, so machine learning, uh, talk about like, it's useful for a lot of applications. And this is really focused on kind of different kinds of problems and what techniques are most useful for different kinds of problems. Um, so very applied. Um, and so they're talking about facilitating transition of statistical learning from an academic to a mainstream field. So I think that's that kind of applied notion. Um, and we also uh, and so in this book, we have these R labs. So it's, you know, we're actually coding and doing stuff uh, as far as analysis and um, as a part of those exercises in the second half of the chapter, each chapter. Um, and, and yeah, so a lot of, I think a lot of us probably feel like that's going to be really valuable. Um, so in terms of the book, um, they, they talk about, I really like this, uh, this, um, kind of uh, lay, laying out of the principles that they're uh, writing the book under. So um, on page nine introduction, they talk about these. So basically one of them is uh, that many statistical learning methods are relevant and useful in a wide range of non-academic, non-academic disciplines. Um, so they're trying to get it out, you know, these methods out to the world and to people who are trying to solve problems. Um, statistical learning should not be viewed as a series of black boxes. Um, and then while it's important to know what each job 
is performed, what job is performed by each cog and kind of the machine behind these techniques, it's not necessary to have the skills to construct, construct the machine inside the box. Um, so I think that's a really, those two points are really important distinction about this book, what they're aiming to do. So there is this element of statistical, statistical learning that I mentioned, that's a, I think it's actually linked to one of these sections below, that is more technical in terms of um, going into the math and you know, uh, matrix algebra and stuff behind each of these. Um, and they try to kind of stick at this level where they talk about what's going on inside of these machines and these techniques. But um, so you can understand and have intuition for when they're going to be useful and when they're not useful and kind of when, you know, it's not appropriate to use these techniques. Um, so know enough about the inner workings, but not actually go into depth about how to like build it, um, if that makes sense, uh, which I think, yeah, is a, is a good, especially a good like first pass of, you know, learning a lot of these techniques, you know. Um, and yeah, and they presume people are interested in applying statistical learning methods to real world problems. They talk about uh, some notation. So um, throughout the book, they're gonna be using notation that refers to the number of observations or N, the number of features or variables. And so they're talking about like a tabular format uh, where you have a certain number of rows, which is uh, defined by, uh, described by N, certain number of columns or features or predictors in some cases um, that are columns. Uh, and, and they talk about a few other things. So like um, some things you may have come across in classes, math classes in the past. Um, so like they, they say that, uh, uh, you know, when they're talking about like a scalar, like a, a single number, right? It's just like, they'll say it's an element of real numbers. Um, so it's like one of the set of real numbers or it's in that, that set. Um, and they also, they went over some other concepts uh, around like, matrices and vectors and stuff um, that we can talk a little bit more about if you want, but I um, thought it was relatively clear in the chapter. Um, all right, so actually we talked a lot about this. Uh, so so they, um, let's see if there's anything else we haven't covered here. So they talk about terminology and main concepts early on and then classic linear methods like linear regression, logistic regression, resampling, um, some modern updates to re to linear methods, and then beyond that, um, beyond linear after after that. Um, so there's uh, in order to access the data that's in this book, you can just as in install the package. Our package is on CRAN um, uh, ISLR two, or you can install. I guess I, I didn't do this, but install the book. Uh, in quotes, um, which I guess has a lot of the the dependencies and one of the listed there and one of those dependencies is this, so this package. So I guess it'll install the stuff if you do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think just installing the package is probably good. There's also a bunch of other links here. So one of those links is this um, sat learning website that I went through before. It's the book's website, PDF of the book, also on that website. Someone posted in the chat, maybe it was, was it Ron? Ron? I don't remember, uh, about this course that's happening. It's actually starting, I think, right now. Uh, maybe on, uh, this one says edX, but I thought someone said it was Coursera. Maybe I need to look at that again. Um, so if you wanted to take that as well or take it later, that's there. Uh, we have our playlist on the YouTube channel. So this is where uh, the play there's a playlist for this book in particular, um, where our recordings will show up. Uh, exercise solutions. So let's go to this. Um, okay, so it looks like they have all the solutions laid out for each of the chapters um, in our files. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then there's the book package, which I just talked about. This is the elements of statistical learning, which I mentioned earlier. It's it's like, I'd say goes deeper in the technical side of things. Um, I definitely want to check it out at some point, but I have not read this. And it's also available for free. Uh, so what's covered? Uh, so uh, they've made some changes first and second edition. We're gonna be using the second edition. 
looks like they've, they've added uh, some stuff on deep learning and survival analysis that wasn't there before, uh, multiple testing um, as well, uh, more Bayesian approaches. So I guess they're, yeah, Bayesian additive regression trees as well. So the matrix completion. Um, matrix completion is something that I don't know a lot about, but I just took a course or an online workshop on uh, causal inference, and it seems like it's a technique that's being used in that setting as well for um, kind of like this difference in difference type of problems. Um, so I'm really curious though, what they, how they discuss it in this book. Uh, one thing I was thinking about in approaching this book too and reflecting on that, the form I had you all fill out was um, like what's not there that I'd be interested in learning more about. And for me, like, I think the big thing that I don't see is like time series analysis and like forecasting type stuff. Um, which is, which is fine. Uh, but, um, there is another book club that I wanted to mention that I'm going to try to join as well, uh, for this forecasting principles and practice, uh, book, um, third edition. That's really good. Uh, so something to consider hmm. if, if you're in more interest, if you want to learn more about forecasting, uh, that's our, this is our base. Rob Hyman is, is awesome. Um, he has a few packages time series stuff um and this book i've referenced a bunch but haven't gone through kind of uh chapter by chapter um yeah and there's there's actually a third edition so i think you've shared the second edition oh, fpp2 yeah, there's a three if you're uh, as well i think you just add three to that yep um all right so uh so we have, yeah, so we have different kind of high level sections in this book. So linear statistical learning um, and then nonlinear statistical learning. So we're getting to splines, polynomials, generalized additive models, pretty excited for that. Um, yeah, and we talked about these concepts uh, a little while ago. Um, all right, coming up on the end here. So I just wanna make sure we get to the what we need to. So some of the examples they talked about in the book, not going to go into these in depth, but um, some motivating examples to get you thinking about, uh, you know, your own ca uh, use cases. You, you know, there's there's classification problems, or uh, or I guess this is more of, of a um, uh, this first one identifying risk factors of some kind of cancers. You're you're really focusing on uh, interpreting uh, what predictors are most um, useful. So like interpretation of these kind of black box models. Um, uh, there's a lot of techniques for that. Uh, so understanding kind of what, what variables or combinations of variables, uh, different levels uh, are most predictive of different uh, levels of an outcome. Um, predicting whether someone will have a heart attack, uh, some misspelling there, uh, on the basis of different um, kind of, uh, comorbidities or uh, uh, demographic diet, et cetera, measurements, email spam detection. So that would be like a classification problem where you're, you're saying for a particular email and the text and the, you know, the structure of that text, uh, is it spam or not? Classifying a tissue sample uh, to one of several cancer cases. Um, and then, yeah, establishing a relationship between salary and demographic variables in the population server data. Uh, they actually linked to the slides here um, where they go into more detail on what some of those data sets look like. Um, just go, just really quick. Okay. Yeah, so you can see kind of um, just talk, show one here. So spam detection example. Um, so they have uh, 4,600 emails. Um, each has a label, so you already have a label, so that's why it's a kind of supervised problem. Your goal is to build a span filter. You have a bunch of input features, so frequencies of um, different common words, and if the words in the yeah, if the words in the email are, are part of how frequent those words are, kind of general usage, punctuation marks as well. Um, so I guess they're trying to figure out if they're how this is set up here. Um, so I guess they're saying, what is the frequency of each of these words that appears in the email? Um, the frequencies are here and they're summarizing, I guess, like what, uh, 
how those frequencies are different depending on if it's spam or not spam. So I guess George is not spam usually. <laughs> um, but, uh, I haven't looked at that in detail. So, uh, but yeah, there's more of that there if you'd like. Um, and yeah, so there's a bunch of data sets they provide here. If you install the package, here are all of them that are listed. Um, oh yeah, spam always is for your as an exclamation point. Yeah, uh, it's definitely, yeah, uh, that's probably true in many cases. Um, so they have a Boston data set about housing, bike share data. It's a lot of really rich stuff here. A lot of different types of um, kind of predict uh, variables, uh, uh, different kind of classes of, um, you know, categorical continuous variables, uh, baseball data. Yeah, so it seems like they've kind of worked hard to give us a really wide range of um, data sets, which is cool. And then at the end of each chapter, you'll see the previous cohorts uh, videos. Um, if you're presenting, it may be useful to watch at least one cohort's previous video just to see how they did it. Um, that could be useful. I did that for, watch this one for this introductory session. Um, all right, so we're running up on the top of the hour here. Uh, anything anyone else wants to mention? Uh, any questions? Um, I guess, does anyone else want to do next week? Uh, I could do it if no one else does, but um, oh, I see a few people have signed up. Lydia, Shan, thank you for putting your name down. Um, does anyone else want to itching to do week two? Um, I'm happy to do it. Uh, no one... I may not be here for week two because it's Mother's Day here and I don't know what my oh, okay. plans are. So I may be watching the video for that one. But Okay. Uh, yeah, I get a couple more of these uh, viewed and I'll be more confident to sign up because I don't really know how it works yet. So I don't want to yeah. put my name in. I just wanted to mention real quickly that edX, it was John the Geek that posted the edX course. And um, even if you don't want it, it's free. And it's actually pretty entertaining just to watch the videos because those two guys that wrote this book, they're kind of funny. <laughs> okay. Cool. That's I think they're X. funny, I should say, maybe. I don't know. You That's should watch that. it. <laughs> That's the edX one. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, um, can you see uh, see this? I just wanted to show on this. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, nobody's. That on the channel here for Book Club ISLR, a lot of the stuff we just mentioned is pinned to the top of it. So it's not may not be obvious at first, but... We just go to the pin content and you can see the book, the shared notes. This is actually the GitHub that hosts the, the book um, and the signups. So we're cohort four. So you can find that Excel we we're just looking at here. Um, I guess some people have been working on the tiny models version of some of these labs, which is really interesting. Definitely take a look more at that. Um, but go ahead. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, like, what if we are not familiar with some of the topics? Like, can we still present them and focus on, oh, I did not understand this, but this is what they said. Like, is it yeah. supposed to be like that? Yeah, I think that's uh, uh, completely fine. I mean, okay. even looking at that poll that I took, uh, seems mm -hmm. like later on, uh, we, we will all be learning uh, for a lot of the concepts kind of together uh, for some of them the first time. Um, and it's totally fine to present. I, I honestly think that most of the time, if you have questions, other people do as well. Uh, and um, sharing those questions, even if someone is more familiar with it, can help them clarify their understanding too. So, um, and then if we have someone who who knows a ton about a particular area, um, they can they can help uh, answer those questions. So, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's like reasonable to say that people will master the, these concepts. Uh, and I think like in a book like this, you know, they give you enough to, to use them and know when to use them and know a little bit about the inner workings, but it's, it's kind of like a survey, somewhat of a survey format. Right. So um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it, you definitely don't have to master it to like to present on it um, for sure. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, so yeah, I was just looking at the calendar too. I re and just realized, yeah, Mother's Day is next Sunday. Not a mother myself, but yeah, I'm wondering if we should um, skip that week or mm -hmm. if we were planning to meet. Yeah, we can do that. Um, it, you know, if, especially if it's a few of us that won't be there. Um, yeah, I might be I'm coming to think about it. Yeah, might be somewhat busy 
as well. I don't know. Are we are we okay to just shift it one week and do this one on the fifteenth? Uh, yeah. Certainly in favor. <laughs> Is that okay? That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, it's like kind of a small group. I want to make sure that we have like uh, as many people as we can. Um, um, yeah, I'm just thinking like if we don't meet, uh, I'm wondering like we could still uh, go through the the content on our own, like read it, maybe share questions in the chat um, or something like that. If you have have questions, um, we could do that sounds something. good. Something like that, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'll actually do the presentation on the uh, fifteenth. Okay, so I can can sounds like we have some consensus there on that. Uh, so I'll we'll just shift everything one week further. Sound good? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, thank you. Yep. So each chapter is gonna be two weeks. Is that correct? Or yes. One week? Yeah. Okay. So the content, the theory is going to be one week and then the lab is going to be the second week. Um, okay. So really just going through and there is a presenter for those second weeks. So like someone still presents, but you kind of, you can do it really however you want. But from what I've seen the other cohorts, they're like going through the problems one by one and there's answers in this uh, book down book. And um, like if we just go here to exercises, the answers are listed here. So they just go through and talk about them and kind of one by one as a group. Uh, if they want to spend more time on discussing one of them, that, that's up to the, the up to us. But yeah. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, thanks. Uh, anything else? I guess I just wanted to say I'm not the most comfortable with R yet, so I sometimes may have really dumb, naive questions on just the R end of things, and you know, coding in general. Um, so hopefully that that'll be okay. I'll, I'll try not to slow us down too much. Oh yeah, uh, don't worry about. I, I think like yeah, this community and our community I, I found in general is really kind of friendly and willing to answer any range of questions. So uh, I wouldn't feel feel uh, hesitant about that if I were, okay. if I were you, awesome. but um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, totally open, whatever, nothing is a bad question, so. Yeah, and I'll echo that as well, because I only started learning to code any language in August and started oh. the, like the ggplot2 book club in September. I did one of the presentations in September and like everyone was super helpful with me mm -hmm. <laughs> and answering my my questions, which probably for them, yeah, but they were like super helpful and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, I think, I think like uh, we're all at different phases of our like learning journey with data science, with stats, with our coding in general. And I think wherever, wherever you are is fine. And um, we'll try to, I'm sure like, I, I think the, the beauty of a book club like this where, where you have people from different backgrounds or different areas of expertise is that you're each gonna like fill in something for someone else, you know? And, uh, and I, I think that's true. So yeah, don't forget about all the things you're bringing to the table too, so. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, all right. Uh, anything else before we stop for today? No, appreciate it again. Thanks for leading this effort. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to the rest of the sessions. Um, but yeah, uh, head to the chat if uh, you have like any other questions to come up in the meantime as you're reading through chapter two. And then we'll plan to meet on the 15th at this time, four o'clock okay. Eastern. Yeah. Sounds All right. Good. Thank you. Uh, All right. Thank you so bye. much. Nice bye. meeting you. Thanks. Bye. -bye. bye.